Do you want to learn why Cisco ACI and HashiCorp Terraform are a match made in heaven? Then stay tuned for episode 17 of DevNet Snack Minute, where you can learn all about it. Hey, Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with the Cisco DevNet program. Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 17 of DevNet Snack Minutes. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, talking to you about APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff that we do here at DevNet. And the cool stuff we're going to be talking today about is ACI and Terraform better together with our guest, Quinn. Uh, Quinn, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, hey, hey, Kareem, hey, Matt. Hey, I'm uh, Quinn Snyder. I'm a, a DevNet developer advocate, and I focus uh, on all things uh, DC networking related, so ACI, NXOS, and all the fun stuff that comes with that. All right, Quinn. Well, thanks for joining us uh, today. And uh, Kareem and I are aware that there's a, a bunch of new stuff out there for ACI and, and Terraform and working with uh, different products from HashiCorp. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been working on? Yeah, so so lately I've been doing a lot of work with with Terraform uh, from HashiCorp and and expanding and and using Terraform a lot, not just for traditional network automation within ACI and and the Cisco multi-site orchestrator, but how can we use Terraform to connect things together uh, so that we enable our application developers to be able to do nifty things with the infrastructure that we know is going to be safe um, and not having to to worry about. Uh, uh, security and, and infrastructure provisioning, really letting the app developers do what they do best and having the infrastructure adapt to them. That's awesome. So can you can you just uh, give us a quick overview on how how do you actually get started with Terraform and in the sense of ACI? Uh, what does the new provider mean from that orchestration? Just just an overview of what what you know you've been building here. Yeah, so, so Terraform has been around for quite a while. Um, it started around 2014 or so, and it was really a cloud native thing. So a lot of the the people that were running to all of the public clouds were using Terraform to, to uh, create their infrastructure, all of their virtual uh, environments and, and all the storage and all those things. And, and Hashi has really done a really good job of trying to move that into the on-prem infrastructure. So with Terraform, what it allows us to do is um, we use a provider, which is uh, akin to just a kind of like an Ansible collection uh, where we can control different parts and pieces of that device uh, using its APIs. But it, it's different in the fact that when I create some configuration using Terraform, I don't have to worry about the individual uh, steps to go from point A to point B. So like in ACI, if I was to provision a tenant construct, I would need to have the top level tenant and then all of the bridge domains and subnets and contracts and filters. And if you build an Ansible playbook, it is possible, but you have to step those out very specifically because there's a lot of relations. If we look at the, the ACI API, and the, the MIT itself, the the neat thing about Terraform as it pertains to ACI and MSO is that it uses a uh, a dependency graph or a dependency mapping. So when you build that provider, which has been done for ACI and MSO, I no longer need to worry about the individual steps to get from point A to point B. ACI or the, the the ACI provider. If I was to build that same tenant construct, I define what I want my tenant to look like uh, using HashiCorp configuration language. And once I apply the configuration uh, and go through the steps of, of applying that configuration towards the end resource. Um, the Terraform provider will sort all of that information out for me. So I, I can put it in any order. In fact, if I was to define a subnet before I define my VRF or my tenant construct, it will read that configuration and say, oh, no, that's wrong. We're going to apply it in the correct order. So it really simplifies the, the whole infrastructure provisioning process. With, the, with I don't need to know as many steps. It knows them for me. And all I have to do is define my configuration. So uh, just to compare and contrast here, you mentioned Ansible earlier. If I was doing that same thing in Ansible, I'd have to actually worry about that order that it goes in because it's more procedural than declarative that we see with, with Terraform. Uh, did I understand that correctly? Yeah, I mean, yes, in the fact that we have to look at, at 
procedural versus declarative steps. I think the the biggest takeaway is even Ansible itself is declarative because I'm not saying, you know, go to this API and do this thing. But gotcha. I, I tend to think of Terraform as like an end state declarative uh, nature rather than an individual step or, or stepwise uh, declarative nature like Ansible would be. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Now, what you've been talking about at the beginning of this is kind of those day zero provisioning activities. Do we get any benefit you know, after the fact, a lot of the stuff that we talk about as far as network automation is getting everything up and running. Um, and then we kind of, you know, allude to the day one, day end type activities. Uh, is there something in here that kind of helps us along with those, those, you know, next day things that we have to worry about? Yeah, so traditionally, if we, you know, to, to your point, we, we talk about the, the the day zero provisioning and we talk uh, a lot about things like CICD pipelines or how can we push something out there uh, to a, a code repository and have it move into our infrastructure and our applications, which is really good. But the problem with it is, is how do we how do we move past that if we have this application service and we've got front ends and back ends and and different parts and pieces well what if one of those front ends goes down how do we know what the the impact is going to be there how do we control that without having to do some kind of operational you know cli wizardry to say okay let's move traffic over to this other location um the nice thing about terraform is that once we have the the initial construct set up we can connect terraform to other pieces of the, of the network and and have it do interesting things and I'll I'll leave it generic for right now uh we can have it do interesting things by by connecting those by connecting terraform with outside pieces so i i have kind of a, a slide up right now uh talking about this day zero deployment um and how we kind of do that that standard ci cd pipeline where we have infrastructure automation application deployment uh kind of going in a in a linear phase and and once we're done with deployment we're done the issue with that is after we go through our day two operations, things have become live. We have this web front end that's talking or working with our application. Well, if we lose a, a piece of that application, if we lose a piece of that front end, we have to go through and do those that that shutdown. We have to say we're going to move our load balancer to say uh, to not point to that that piece. Now we do have some interactions built into our application delivery controllers, our load balancers, by saying, okay, we're going to probe to see if the server's alive. But if we want to do creative things with our infrastructure we can use um, this console Terraform sync, which allows us to connect multiple HashiCorp applications. So we have console that's working as our service mesh. It's saying our applications are alive or down, basically doing the same thing that our load balancers would be doing. Are those things alive? As the applications change, they will uh, console will, will perform that update and say, okay, we've lost our web front end, uh, say that Nginx server goes down. Once that console update has, has occurred, this console Terraform sync binary will then pull the state from console and be able to perform some kind of configuration towards the end state device. So in this case, if we're submitted to uh, automation exchange, is focused on using the ACI fabric as a stateless load balancer. So if we're using a, the fabric as a load balancer, if we lose one of those front end applications, we no longer want to send traffic towards that dead app. So by uh, console updating uh, its directory and having it, the synchronization between console and Terraform using that CTS sync binary, Terraform will now configure the fabric to say no longer send traffic. So we've created our own stateless load balancer just by using open source tooling and uh, Cisco ACI to, to send traffic where we want to go across the, the, the infrastructure. The same thing can happen if we start scaling out those services as well. Say we add more devices, uh, more web front ends, those get updated in console and we can start sending that, that whole chain through. So it's like an application developer led CICD pipeline in a way. This is pretty pretty cool. I mean, not only that I'm I'm monitoring what's happening and I'm adjusting my infrastructure based on my application, I'm actually allowing my application to kind of expand and and being elastic as much as I want it to be based on the usage. So that's pretty pretty some pretty interesting stuff. Um, from from a Terraform perspective. Uh, and and this could be outside of the scope of this conversation. Do you know if we have within Cisco an initiative to work around, you know, releasing new uh, providers, or you know, or is it just with ACI? 
No, so we've we've released the the uh, ACI and and MSO providers um, within the DCN space. There is an early uh, kind of preview, so to speak, of of the provider for uh, DCNM, uh, Data Center Network Manager, to manage our our EVPN VXLAN fabrics. Uh, I've been working with with the dev teams. I'm kind of uh, showing that up a little bit there. Uh, we do have providers for Intersight, so our cloud management of our compute. And there's a lot of other interesting things that are happening with uh, providing some some synchronization between Terraform Cloud, Intersight, and our on-prem compute. There's a lot of things in the DC space. Um, and I know that, that there's uh, work going on within uh, DNAC and, and other tooling because um, the, the power and, and what I, didn't quite allude to earlier on was, you know, with with Terraform, we don't even we don't even have to worry about the application, or we we don't have to worry about just the application of that configuration. We can do all CRUD operations. So because Terraform is saving that state, we can update and delete all of the configuration just by having that one file. So we get a full life cycle of that configuration. And I, I, a lot of the, the BEs are starting to realize just how powerful having that tooling there is. Um, and I'm sure the, the the list of providers is only going to go upwards from here yeah that's an awesome thing about terraform that i didn't fully understand until you just said it right now because i'm used to working in the code in python and having to implement all the creates all the updates all the deletes so doing kind of the same thing three times um, and then being able to set it up such that you only have to worry about it once as a uh as a infrastructure automation engineer is just awesome <laughs> yeah. not 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 to mention matt that it also in the long haul, it, it saves on um, in, in cost, right? Because now you have the power of using and destroying the infrastructure when you need to, because you have that capability within Terraform. So it's some cool stuff, actually. Yeah, that's very, very cool. Um, Quinn, did you want to mention any resources for developers as they're um, getting ready to, to jump into the Terraform pool? Yeah, so we have a ton of, of newly released learning labs uh, and, and content and, and uh, stuff like that all uh linked on, on our, our main infrastructure's code uh, landing page for data center networking. It's, it's developer.cisco.com slash nexus API. And that has all things IAC related uh, with a, a big emphasis on, on, on Terraform um, and the use cases and a lot of the, the partnership work that we're doing between ourselves and Hashi as well. All right, man. That's awesome. Um, we do have one more question. I'm going to kick the ball to Kareem right now because he loves okay. asking this one. <laughs> all right, all right. We do this all the time with all of our guests, Quinn, and we ask our guests if you have one superpower, what would that be and why? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, well, I'm sure you guys are aware. I love. Um, using my my smoker and cooking a lot of of meat all year round and and of so course. i think if i had one superpower uh it would be to make sure that my uh smoked meat never comes out anything but perfect <laughs> oh now i'm starving <laughs> i think i missed lunch today <laughs> that sounds awesome well the next, the next snack minute will actually have to be outside uh eat, working on snacks for the snack minute that well sounds great, great man. i'm in i'm so in all right, Snackers, that's all we have for you today. Hope you enjoyed our episode and uh, stay tuned for our next one. Thank you. Thank you.